Hey guys, CB Super. Uh, today I'm going to go over some green screen techniques. Um, these are two different techniques, one using the clean plate and one not using the clean plate. And I'm also going to show you how if you've ever done any kind of green screen work and you've had absorbent amount of noise inside of your foreground footage, I'm going to show you how to, you can get rid of that without having to use any kind of like denoiser or anything like that. So I have two pieces of footage. One is this uh, like clip art that's been put over almost a near perfect uh, green background. And then this other one is this uh, Pixabay video footage of a guy opening his door and you'll notice it's an actual green screen. There's a little bit of a light. We definitely have some green cast and we got a, a bunch of different problems that we'll need to work through on this one. Um, I apologize if this video seems long. You may want to watch it on two times speed because uh, I'm guessing this is going to be, you know, a pretty lengthy video. But let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Okay, inside of Fusion, here's, uh, here's the video footage. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the Delta key here. So I'm going to go ahead and shift space, type in Delta and bring that in. I'm also going to use a clean plate. So I'm going to shift space again, type in clean, and I'm going to plug the media into the clean plate. So let's take a look at what the clean plate does here. It gives me an option of using the color and I could just click and hold this down and I could grab a color from this and it might actually work pretty well here. Um, but there's another way I can also click on color and go down to ranges and now I can pick a range of color that I like maybe I want to pick all of this color and what I'm doing is I'm building a clean plate for the Delta Keyer. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to erode a little bit off the edges because uh, sometimes there is some discoloration that is close in the pixels uh, and usually like caused by compression and whatnot. Also you'll notice that it is eroding here on the edges and that's because there was some discoloration on the edges. So before I do anything, I want to actually transform this and I want to size it up just a little bit just so I don't have to deal with that additional um, poor uh, edging for whatever reason. So now that I've eroded this clean plate a little bit, I erode it maybe just a little bit more and then now I can grow the edges and I can fill the entire section. So if that doesn't fill everything, you can go ahead and click on this fill. And that will also fill things. It, it doesn't really matter on this one because we were able to actually fill everything up. So you can just leave it either way, should be fine. And now you can jump over to this Delta Keyer. And once I plug this um, clean plate into the Delta Keyer, you'll see I immediately get a really good key right off the bat. And so whenever you're checking your key or your, um, or your mat, uh, you're gonna wanna be jumping back and forth to the, uh, to the Axia Alpha. Uh, and as we look here, it looks pretty good from a distance, but as we get closer, you might not be able to tell on your screen, but there's a, there's quite a bit of uh, noise, of gray noise inside of this, inside of my white part of my mat. Uh, so ideally, my mat will be, um, if, if there's nothing that's supposed to be transparent in this scene, my mat should be perfectly white on all of the opaque areas and then perfectly black on all of the transparent areas. So our goal here is to get to that so let's go ahead and click on the delta here and we can go ahead and skip this tab skip this tab and go straight over to the mat and actually it, when i'm messing with the mat I, I like to go from final result over to status but once you go to status you're actually going to have to click off of the alpha to see an actual um, R rgb representation um, but it's actually in um, whites blacks and grays so gray is going to show you all of the things that are you know in between white and black but we know that these grays should be white because nothing on there should be transparent. We also have some gray inside of our blacks. There's a couple of different sliders that we can use to actually adjust the whites and the blacks. One of them is this clean foreground and clean background. And sometimes I'll use that, but I won't usually use this to start off with. I like to actually start off with the thresholds. If I know that I have to clean up some of this black, I will clean up some of the black threshold, which is on the low end. And once I start to notice uh, all of the, the little gray pockmarks disappearing, I'll, I'll try to like scrub through as much as possible and check to make sure that I don't see any little gray bits outside. So once I'm happy with the blacks, I'll go ahead and jump on and move into the whites. In order to clean up some of this white, I'm going to have to start dropping down on the high end. And you don't usually want to go too far. You don't want to push it too hard. I like to come in here and look at some of these corners. So I want to click off of status because I've done pretty much all I need here on status. Uh, and I can come back over here to final result. And now I'll notice that I'm actually seeing quite a bit of, uh, of fringing or haloing 
It doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to be usable. It just means that for whatever reason, I'm not getting a perfect key right off the bat. And that's okay because we know we're going to have to come in here and we're going to have to work a little bit. And that's okay. So now we're going to probably have to do a little bit of eroding and dilating. So let's go ahead and try to drop it down just a little bit. And, and it helps when you're um, doing even any erode or dilate. If you hold down the command key, it's going to make very minimal movements. And you don't want to go too far on this. It's real easy to uh, push it too hard and start to eat away at whatever your foreground is. And that's, that's looking pretty good. Um, one thing that you will notice though is that um, sometimes it's easy to go overboard and make it too sharp. You want them to blend in a little bit so you, sometimes you're going to want to add a little bit of blur back in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and come in here just a little bit and check my mat. Mat looks pretty good. I don't see any bits of gray. Um, I can come back over into status and see how much gray there actually is. Got to get back into RGB mode. So there is still a little bit of gray and that's okay because um, what you're looking at here is actually a little bit of blurring. And of course blurring, like as, as we're familiar with Gaussian blurs, um, we know that there is some transparency in there. So you may see a little bit of a transparency here and that's going to be okay. What we're going to do is we're actually going to jump over into the final result and we're going to go ahead and comp something in real quick. So we'll just bring a piece of footage in and we'll take this delta here and we'll actually go straight in and we'll just merge it on top of uh, this other piece of footage and see what we have going on here. All right and that looks actually really good. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. So that's how you can use the Delta Cure using the clean plate. Um, so where does the clean plate shine? Uh, when you have something like this where we have lots of green and the green is probably, it's more green than not, a clean plate doesn't work on every type of, uh, of key. Um, so you, you are still going to have to play around with it. We could have also done this with just the Delta Cure and um, I'll show you how you can do that really quickly as well. So we'll just go ahead and bring um, this transform down. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is, and you guys may be aware of this. Um, so something that's kind of cool is if, uh, if, say if I was to command C and then just come down here a little bit and I shift command V, what that's going to do is that's going to create an instance where these two are instances of these two um, nodes up here. They're going to be the exact same. Now you can de-instance some aspects. Say if I wanted, say if I change this size, uh, that's actually going to change the size of both of these. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and Command Z that. Uh, but if I wanted to, uh, if I wanted to de-instance this, I could de-instance just specific um, parameters inside of here so that I could change this specific instance, which I don't need to right now. In fact, I didn't even need to do that. I just wanted to show you that because uh, I don't remember talking about it in any of my other videos. Okay, so we're just going to use this instance and we're going to bring in just the Delta here by itself. All right, so now we have the Delta here. Let's go ahead and we'll key out this background. So I'm gonna drag and hold my left mouse button and I'm just gonna click over here somewhere and I'm gonna take a look at the mat real quickly. Right away I noticed that looks like it's a pretty good mat. It's not too different than what I had in the original. There is still some speckling of grays. And then if we jump over to the status and jump back into the RGB mode, we'll see, okay, well there's a little bit more gray spots inside of the black than uh, that I'm gonna have to deal with. Um, that is the nice thing about dealing with these clip arts that are put on green backgrounds is they're usually completely perfect green backgrounds. The only reason we're seeing a little bit of uh, speckling here is probably just to, you know, any kind of imperfections or compression that may have been introduced um, when these were, you know, encoded. I'm a big fan of uh, when you make footage, try to keep it as large as possible. If you can keep it in 12-bit, 12-bit raw or some kind of pro res by all means you know the more data you have the better once you start going into different codecs it starts bending some of those um, some of those pixels and you start losing uh, some of the data so it makes it a little bit harder and with compression you start getting uh, blurred lines blurred blurred edges especially on any kind of area that has any kind of movement all right, so anyways though, uh, let's go ahead and jump into this keyer and let's kind of do the same thing that we were doing earlier. The only difference is now we can kind of come into this, uh, we'll come back into the threshold. We'll go ahead and crush the blacks a little bit, bring in the whites. We have a similar effect that we got using the uh, clean plate. Now we can come in here, we can look at the final result and we notice 
We have this uh, little bit of halo or white spill. You'll notice that uh, one thing I didn't really talk about in the last one was um, this soft color. So soft color is it's going to mix whatever this color is, which you want to use to replace the, the green spill. But because this is such a good key, this probably isn't even the best example of it. I could uh, hard color is going to just replace with the color. Soft color is going to replace using this uh, this replace color, but it's also going to mix in some of the attributes of the uh, the source color. So if there would have been any kind of um, uh, imperfections in the color, like you know shadows or um, hot spots or anything like that. Uh, that's also going to come along with it. Uh, and then, of course, you could also use the source color, which is going to give you, um, you know, it's going to keep all of that green tint that we had. Uh, by default, it leaves it, I believe, on soft color. So usually that's, you know, plenty fine. You just leave it on there because it's going to keep in all the, the shadows that it would have already had. Again, just like we did it the last time with this, um, I'm going to Command-Z that because I wasn't holding down Command. Just bring it down just a little bit. Add a little bit of blur back out, take a look at it, looks okay. And then now we can come over here and we can just merge this back in. Let's go ahead and unplug that one, merge this in here. All right, both of them look pretty good. Uh, I would I would definitely accept either one of these. Uh, one thing you can't really tell is that there will probably be some noise, but because this is an actual video footage, just a picture, it's a clip art, um, you're not gonna really notice too much noise there. Um, so I'm going to call this one done and let's go ahead and jump into the other where we're going to key out the green inside of this uh, door well here. Um, we can already see there's a few problems here. There is some light that is peeking in through this green screen. We know that's going to cause some problems. There's actually quite a bit of green cast inside of here. Once he opens the door, because it's a darker area and a lighter area outside with the green cast thanks to the green screen, um, we know that this is going to create some problems inside of the, this door whale as well. But let's go ahead and just jump in and see how we can tackle this. So I'm going to show you two ways to do this. Uh, one using the clean plate, one not using the clean plate. Both using the Delta Cure though. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to type in clean. And let's go ahead and load it up in here and see how to best do this. So I think for this instance, I think ranges is probably going to work the best. And we're going to go ahead and erode it. A little bit so we can get rid of some of that dark black shadows and then we can go ahead and grow it all the way which isn't going to be far enough but then we can go ahead and just fill it and that's a pretty good uh, clean plate right there now we'll go ahead and just shift space type in Delta bring in the Delta gear uh, plug the Delta gear back in and now we can just load the clean plate into the Delta gear and see how well it keys so it keys pretty well. Um, we noticed that already there is some transparency here. So there is some transparency issues and let's go ahead and take a look at the mat first. All right, so definitely see some grays. We'll go ahead and just kind of scrub through a little bit here. And I'm gonna drop down into quarter resolution and drop out of high quality. It's quite a bit of noise, but that's to be expected. Um, anytime you're doing any kind of green screening, you're gonna have just a crazy amount of noise that's going to be dancing around and I'm going to show you how to get rid of that without using any kind of denoising software though so that's pretty cool. Alright so inside the Delta here let's go ahead and jump over to the matte section and let's start to clean up some of this black first but before we actually want to jump out of the alpha mode and then back into status mode so we can kind of see a little bit better representation of what is actually opaque and what is transparent and what is in between. So we'll go ahead and bump up the blacks a bit and we'll bump the whites and crush them a bit. Now it's showing where there's quite a bit of a uh, green spill and that's okay. All right, that looks um, like we've got it, like we've got it pretty well. Let's jump back in over to the final status and take a look at the actual mat. All right, so we noticed that we have some gray over here. Now there's a couple different ways we can deal with that, but I think it's a pretty good opportunity to talk about solid mats, garbage masks, and, uh, and effect masks. Uh, so we're not really going to use the effect mask right now, but what we are going to use is we can just bring a rectangle in here, move it over onto the uh, the side, and then just bump it all the way up. And what we're going to do is we're going to mask this out. So we're telling the program that it doesn't need to worry about this. This is just going to be white, and that's 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 all it needs to think about. So when we pipe this in, we're going to want to pipe it in. I like to use the solid mat. You can also do this on the other side if you need to, which 
Uh, I think I did this once before and I also needed to do it on this side. So we're just going to do it just in case. It kind of works best if you just have these going into each other. There is times where you will have to animate these separately. Uh, for this piece of footage specifically, this will be just fine. And you can kind of uh, rearrange these and it's not a bad idea to like just keep these together. Uh, you can even uh, Command G, you can group them. You can name that group if you want. All right, and then now as we play through here, um, we have no holes on the uh, on the sides, which is pretty good. All right, let's go back out of the mask here and let's take a look at this little piece up here. All right, so the easiest way to take care of this is actually just to garbage mask this out. In order to do that, we can just bring in a actual polygon. We can get kind of close here. We don't have to... It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect unless you want it to be absolutely perfect. Um, and once you're done with this, go ahead and just either click on that little lock or you can hit Shift N. But we do want to still modify it, so you can hit uh, Shift M and that'll let you at least modify it. And now you can kind of just move it uh, into position. You're actually going to have to connect it though uh, in order to really see what it's doing. So if you just hold down the right mouse button or you can hold the Alt button when you drop it in on the Delta Gear, it'll give you this option to put it in as a garbage mask. And uh, if you click off of it, you can see what it's doing. If you want it to get a little bit closer, you can uh, obviously move it in closer. And then if you think that it needs a little bit of soft edge, you can do that. It's, it's basically just a feather if you're coming from After Effects. Uh, and But the only thing is uh, because this shot moves a little bit, we're actually going to have to animate this. You could animate it on uh, every frame just by going one frame over two frame, three frame, four frames, five frames, and then whenever you see it actually moving. Um, and actually at, at a certain point, it kind of disappears. So what's nice is that you can actually come in here and you can turn the level um, and you can animate the level. Maybe I don't want it to turn on until I actually need it. Mm. So right about here, I know that it's on and I'm gonna need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and if I come back to here, I can go ahead and turn it off. So now it won't cut into the door. So when I close this door, you won't see it. It'll still be there, but it just won't be affecting anything. So right around here, we can go ahead and move it back a little bit more. And then as he closes the door, I can go ahead and... I'm actually going to want to animate this as it closes the door. And then once it gets to about here, I can actually maybe go one more frame and then turn it off. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, let's go back to the keyed mode. Let's take a look at it. All right, so we'll notice that right about here, for some reason, so our clean plate actually isn't long enough. Whole frame. All right, there we go, that fixed it. Um, so for whatever reason, the clean plate actually wasn't long enough. Uh, and we changed it from whole, from back to, from sequence back to whole frame, and now it's long enough. All right, so now that we've fixed that, um, we have all of this crazy noise that we just we're not in love with because if we look at the original footage we don't have the noise but we have a lot of the green spill that's in there and that's why we know there's going to be quite a bit of noise so in order to get rid of that noise the easy fix is to actually just um, use this remember what we built here in this Delta here was a mat we don't need to necessarily use the Delta here for anything other than just creating a mat for our footage so let's go ahead and bring some uh, other footage in real quick, just so we can kind of see what's going on here. This is going to be my background footage, and this will be the foreground footage. Let's take a look at what we have here. Just grab a frame somewhere in the center, and we'll see, okay, we can tell there's still quite a bit of noise here. We haven't actually dealt with any noise yet. Um, we just want to see what it looks comped on to this, uh, you know, kind of like Doctor Who type uh, scenario. Okay, so... Instead of this Delta here going straight into the merge, let's go ahead and drive this media into the merge. And now we see, we don't see anything, right? Okay, uh, but what if we were to use this Delta here as an actual mask? Let's see what that does. Okay, well that works. What we're telling it is it's taking this alpha mat, which is, uh, which is this, things that are white, will be opaque. Things that are black will be transparent. So that is essentially all it was doing when we were using this keyer. The only difference is now we're piping in this media 
through this merge and it's merging directly and it's basically bypassing the delta keyer altogether but it's using the delta keyer to build the mat and as we look at it we say oh that's really cool but there's one problem we still have this green cast now because we didn't use any of the spill suppression in order to suppress this uh this green color cast or um, suppress the green color cast on the on the edges here. That's the one thing we lose by bypassing that delta gear. It pretty much did it all for us and we didn't even have to worry about it. But guess what? There's an actual node specifically for that and it's this mat control node which has been hiding right here in plain sight all this time that we never use. Um, we can actually use it finally. So let's go ahead and drive in the media into the mat control as the background and then we can drive the mat control back into the merge. And let's take a look at this mat control real quick and see what it's doing. All right, so first thing we notice inside the mat control is it gives us some options. It says uh, combine, what, is it, what do we want to combine? Well, we want to combine an alpha, but if we look over here, we actually don't have an alpha. The alpha is just this regular alpha. So where are we gonna get an alpha from? Well, we already made an alpha, right? We made it in this delta gear, so let's go ahead and pipe in this alpha into the delta keyer, but let's pipe it in as the foreground. So now it's going to take this mat control, now it's going to take the delta keyer, its mask, and let's take a look at what we have. Okay, well, we brought the we brought the mat over from the delta keyer into the mat control. So now we have all of the, the nearly all the same functions as the delta keyer. If we come over into the delta keyer and we come over here to the spill suppression tab, uh, we'll go ahead and pin this just so we can kind of take a look at it. And then let's come over to the mat control. We notice if we come over to the next tab over where it says spill, we actually have bill suppression. So by default, it's set to blue. Let's go ahead and set it to green. So it's it's nearly identical. We have a lot of the same functions here that um, we had over in the Delta gear. We don't need the Delta gear right now. We do need the mat control. So we know we're gonna be using the mat from the Delta gear, but let's go back into a mode where we can actually see. In fact, we're actually going to dual screen it for now and let's bring the mat control to the left and the overall finished product merge to the right. Just so we can kind of see what we're doing, mainly around like this hand area. So inside the mat control, we've already spill suppressed green. We can tell that some of the green cast has definitely been taken out already and that's good. We wanted that. You can also start to turn up the spill suppression and you'll see what it's doing. So right now we have it on rare. If you turn it on medium, you'll notice that it starts to take away even more of the green. And if you turn it back down, you know, it introduces it again. Uh, we still have some of this green cast on the door. All right, so generally rare and medium are for green screen. Uh, you can go up to well done. Uh, burnt is generally for blue screen. We're going to actually go up to well done just so we can, we got some pretty aggressive uh, tinting going on here on the door that we just want to take care of. So I think it'll probably work best if we bump it up a little bit and then we just bump down the, the spill suppression just a bit. And that's cleaning it up pretty good. And now we just have to deal with the, the actual fringing here on the end. So just like in the Delta Keyer, we also have these functions for contracting, expanding, and turning the gamma up and down and blurring. All right, so playing with these is like a dance, right? You have to figure out um, how much blur you actually need in order to adjust and contract and expand and then also affect gamma. But then you come back over into the actual spill side and then that's when you can start dealing with fringe. So we're getting a little bit of weird uh, coloration here. So let's go ahead and change the fringe size back to what it was. And now we can kind of gamma down a little bit. And what that's going to do is that's going to contract that mask even further without actually contracting. And now that looks really good. And that is pretty perfect. That's about what we're going to get right there. So now when we look at the final product, We'll go ahead and look at this. Uh, and now we don't have all of the noise, which is great. Um, let's go ahead and pull this out and then we'll kind of look at it. We'll go ahead and uh, let it cache up real quick. So here's the, here's the two side by side. Um, you can see, I mean, obviously that the coloring is a little off. Uh, coloring is more true on this side just because we actually went through and uh, we upped the spill suppression to get rid of more of the green color cast, which this did automatically. You can see, I mean, you don't necessarily want to rely on the automatic functions of any of the nodes. Uh, you're definitely going to want to go in there and you're going to tweak things. Um, remember I said that we were going to go back to doing the spill suppression, but then we just didn't. So that's why these are so drastically different colors. Uh, but even if the colors, like, don't even look at the colors, just look at all of the noise inside I mean, just look in the jacket. There's so much noise in there versus um, 
uh, the other way that we did it. So we just kind of play through these. You'll notice here, uh, it's just dancing, dancing up and down the walls, dancing on his jacket, on the door. I didn't, I didn't make this video because I want to show you um, any other way is not as good. Because I'm a huge, firm believer of good enough. Uh, something needs to be good enough. If you want to do it this way, you absolutely can. It takes more time, and we didn't even get into like actual compositing and color grading or any any of that. This is just um, this is just solely us pulling a key. We've only done the key. We also didn't get into some of the harder problems where the coloring isn't right, or there's too many different variations of light to darkness inside of the green, or maybe you're using a blue screen. How, is it is it different? Um, is there uh, hair involved? Because you know you'd be surprised. You know when there is hair involved, that also is going to uh, make a big difference as to how much gray mat. We didn't even talk about gray mats, but you will also have gray mats inside and comped on top of other composites. So you'll have you could have multiple mats on top of each other, where um, the very top layer may be a gray mat, where you're also showing some transparency. So there's, there's varying different degrees of uh, how much effort you want to put into getting your key correct. This is showing you some of the techniques that um, I like to use. Uh, you don't have to use these techniques. In fact, there's, there's, this, is, this is similar to Photoshop where there's 101 different ways to do the same function. Um, if you just shift space and you type in key, look at all these different keyers that are just ultra keyer, luma keyer, um, that's not really a keyer, uh, difference keyer, delta keyer, chroma keyer. Um, and all of these do a very similar function. There's just a tons of different ways. I personally like to use the Delta key for almost everything. I don't know. I hope you guys got something out of this. I know this was probably pretty long. If you guys stuck it out this long, I appreciate it. I do think that this is a very important part of being a visual effects or compositor or for if you want to start using any kind of green screen assets to get the best key possible with the least amount of noise without having to use any kind of denoiser. I know you can do chroma key inside of uh, the color tab. I don't, I don't use it. If you just need to do like that little subscribe logo that we did in the beginning, yeah, absolutely. Um, that, that, that would work probably just fine. And again, it's all about how long is it going to take you to do something? Is it more efficient to do something inside of the color tab? It may be. And if it gets you the effect that you're happy with, then by all means, do it the faster way. And this is probably the longer way. And there's an even longer way I haven't showed you yet. This is, um, but you know, this is a fairly advanced technique. Uh, if you guys, you know, um, use it, I'd love to see what you guys use it on. Um, you'll notice that the worse your footage is, uh, and by worse, I mean, um, uh, the more compressed your footage is, the harder it is it's going to be to get a good key because you're going to be dealing with fringing and uh, chromatic aberration. You're going to be dealing with all different, you're going to be just compounding uh, different problems on top of footage that may or may not be uh, worth keying. At some point, if it's, if it, you know, there's, there's tons of footage that is just not worth keying out, you may end up having to rotoscope and then just do some spill suppression later to get out whatever green cast you have. So. Hopefully this helps you guys. If you guys got anything out of it, I would love to hear about it. Um, if you guys have another technique that you guys like using for green screen, please leave it down in the comments. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.